Sadowski, Captain Crunch, uh, knew a smuggler that he was friendly with and who he said uh, could get the best weed down in Columbia, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we went and met him. Uh, the guy not only needed a customer, he needed an airplane. Uh, we had done two small trips with this guy where we sold his weed. And I think we put up the money for him to do the trips. And we end up with next to nothing. Mm -hmm. And he saw I was getting ready to pull out. And he said, I want you to come to Columbia and meet our connection. At that point, I had never been to Columbia, neither had Robbie. I went, oh, yeah. Meet your connection? Sure. Of course, if it sounds too good to be true. So we said, uh, I'll meet you in Barranquilla at the Hotel del Prado. Anyway, we get there, and he ain't there. We check in the Del Prado, which is a nice, beautiful old hotel in, in Barranquilla, built around a courtyard like an old Moroccan design. And uh, we waited around, waited around, and finally uh, called his house, spoke to his wife. Of course, he didn't come to the phone. He spoke to his wife, and... Uh, she said, oh, he's back already. I said, well, he was supposed to meet us. She said, well, I don't know anything about that, but he came back yesterday. So here we are. We spend the night in the suite, and the next morning we go out to breakfast out by the pool, which is this gorgeous courtyard with tennis courts, and, you know, it's old Spanish design. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we're not there 10 minutes and order breakfast. And the dude comes up, introduces himself, young guy. And he says, I'm so-and-so. I used to live in Detroit. And I see you guys are from the States. And, of course, we had on a little heavy gold. And uh, we're wearing smuggler's clothes, hippie clothes. Uh, back then, the real nice uh, silk tie-dye shirts. And uh, <laughs> silk tie dyed shirts, yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, that's that was the hot shirt yeah. back then, they were okay. gorgeous. And uh, what do you call it, Britannia's? So, do you think jeans, uh, right? Britannia's. So, do you think there were always was this the kind of place where you think there were always guys in the in the biz that were always hanging out, kind of looking for gringos to to check in and that were looking yeah, for? Yeah, it wasn't busy because it was a classy hotel. It was the classy hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, and Johnny, who was the guy we met, he was very close with the uh, doorman. And it was very likely the doorman that sent him in. He was a friend of the doorman. So the doorman spotted us. And we're walking around and we ain't up to nothing. <coughs> he comes over, introduces himself, nice guy. He says, why don't I take you around and show you the town? He said, we can talk and we can go to some nice restaurants. And uh, if we hit it off, then we can talk some business. And he never said what the business was, but it was just obvious that we were there looking and he was there looking for a connection in Miami. Uh, we spent a really nice day. We went down to the beach. Uh, we went to couple of different really nice restaurants and in the end we started planning a, a trip and the first trip uh, was going to be a DC-3 actually at the time we weren't sure because we hadn't gotten the plane yet but we found a DC-3 in Panama with long-range tanks that we didn't have to change the tanks tanks are in the wings yeah and either you got to put auxiliary tanks inside the plane, usually rubber bladders, fuel bladders. But this had Pan Am wings. Pan Am wings, I think, held 1,450 or 1,500 gallons. And the plane burns 100 to 150 gallons an hour, depending if you got a tailwind or a headwind. 
So did that mean you wouldn't have to refuel from Columbia to Wouldn't Miami? have to refuel, didn't have to stop in Haiti to fuel up, which is where most people did their refuel. We discussed price. Again, it depends on the load and where it was going to come from. The, Johnny wasn't a grower. Gotcha. He just knew all the growers right. and the big exporters like Raul Davila and some of the other people I did business with. He introduced us to all of them. Now, now what would be... What <laughs> and, would, and this happened on that first trip. What, what would be some of the uh, better known strains back then that people would, would recognize? That, what that everybody would... wanted was Santa Marta gold. Uh, it was a beautiful golden color. It was so hashy, so full of resin, that if you got it fairly fresh, when you went to roll a joint, you couldn't get it off your fingers. It would stick to your hands. It was hard to break up. <laughs> now, that was back in the days of seeds. By the time I was ready Good to Columbian. leave, we had arranged for a 5,000 pound load of Colombian gold to be put on an airstrip that was above Lake Cienega. That's between Barranquilla and El Rodadero. El Rodadero is a resort by Santa Marta. Uh, <clears throat> we are going to bring in a DC-3, which will hold those 5,000 pounds. We had arranged for fuel. In fact, uh, they had asked me if I could bring a couple of electric fuel pumps, battery-operated fuel pumps, uh, to speed the fueling so they didn't have to do it manually, which we did. And... Uh, after that, it was waiting for them to tell me that the load was ready to go onto the airstrip. That was a kind of nerve-wracking couple of weeks until they could get the load from the mountains above Santa Marta down the Magdalena River uh, and get it onto the airstrip. It seems that uh, the Magdalena was barricaded by the Colombian uh, army and Colombian police and they were uh, collecting tolls. So it was three weeks of waiting for that phone call and uh, we moved the DC-3 to uh, Aruba and when the call finally came I called our pilots in Aruba and said it's time to go tomorrow morning and they told me they had no money to get the plane uh, fueled up and to pay the landing and, and takeoff fees. That's another story. So uh, that's another story how I got that plane out of there. So but you, you had negotiated price though, you knew what you'd be paying for that load? Yeah, I think that first load was close to $60 a pound. Now I could have bought Colombian regs for 25 or $30 a pound, but this was Colombian gold and well worth the extra money. And I was able to sell it for a lot more and a lot easier in Miami than I would have the Colombian regs. Perfect.